Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Devane, the Total Connector. So really excited to have uh, Case um, K E S Bitcoin. You can find him on Twitter, who's who's done, who done you know who does tremendous you know fascinating uh, educational work, um, uh, tutorials, videos, instructions. You know how to do this and that, running full node, buy non uh, KYC Bitcoin on peer to peer decentralized exchanges. Uh, and you know a spectrum of other uh, necessary, really urgent uh, educational materials, and yeah, um, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. But essentially, uh, how to buy Bitcoin on a non-KYC um, platform such as BISC, BISQ network. And without further ado, this is my talk with uh, Kiss Bitcoin. Let me know what you think. Please give it a share, retweet, like, follow me. Uh, follow also Case Bitcoin and subscribe, please. Thank you so much. And this is my interview, my talk with Case Bitcoin. All right, we're live. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, welcome to the show, Case. Thanks so much for your time. How are you doing? Great. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, Case. Um, I'm really excited to, you know, to have this conversation with you um, about, uh, you know, uh, main topic is uh, uh, how to buy Bitcoin on a non-KYC or, or KYC less um, exchange platform. Um, Kiss, you want to like uh, talk a little bit like how'd you get, uh, like what do you want to uh, tell about yourself? Like how'd you get to Bitcoin? What's, you know, What's your path to Bitcoin? Um, you know, it's, everyone seems to have a similar story. I, I found it really early and didn't do enough with it. <laughs> I found it in 2010. I think I got a Blockstream, um, no, no, Blockchain.info or whatever it was called back then, a wallet. I don't remember if anything happened, um, but I didn't do it. Like then it just vanished. Bitcoin, I, I think I read that that article, whatever that famous article was in 2010. I know it was 2010, but I was, uh, I was just busy with other things and, you know, getting my life straightened out. So it wasn't time for me, um, to really, to really get into Bitcoin. And then I found it again in 2015. And that's when, that's when every, that's when the love affair began full on love affair. And, um, you know, here I am, it's just, um, you know, Bitcoin, makes sense to me on so many levels and um it just resonates with me i mean it's 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 almost like uh it's almost like it's like love at first sight you know it's 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 so it's so difficult to describe because um i think when you have a certain set of experiences i i experienced a lot of you know bad things um you know i've always been an entrepreneur uh at a very young age um, and when I, you know, when eBay first came out, I was selling, um, anything that I could scrap up like on eBay. And this is in two, no, two, 2099 maybe. And, um, I remember selling a PlayStation one and I got a money order and I sent out the PlayStation and I cashed a money order and I get a letter from the US Postal Service that I cashed a fake money order and I owe them money. And I was like, what the fuck is this? How can I, how, how can I be responsible for this after the fact? Like a money order is supposed to be the next best thing to the cash, yet I'm still on the hook. And then years later, I had issues with PayPal too. So I came into this understanding the problems with the traditional system. Um, which, you know, a lot of people may not have, if, if you, do, if everything is um, rosy the whole time, you don't really understand why Bitcoin's valuable. So, you know, my, my unique set of experiences uh, made it very clear right away. Um, and uh, the hard cap, you know, limited supply, finite supply just, just makes sense. So 
Oh, did you get did, like like that's a really important question. Like, did you when did you get like for the first time the essence of like the absolute scarcity of Bitcoin? Because that's like if I had like understood, I mean, at all what money is, you know, I mean, we we you know who learns that shit anyway? You know, it's like we never get taught like what is money, what is what is scarcity. So when did you get that? Or how did you understand like absolute scarcity? I yeah, it's I don't know. You know, I didn't know really much about money either. It's only because. I found Bitcoin that I learned about like Austrian economics, economics and uh, <laughs> game theory, like all of these things only because I needed to, to better understand Bitcoin. Otherwise, you know, who gives a shit really? Like I, I just, I didn't even, it, <laughs> most people aren't even aware, right? Not uh, that it's, it's all very interesting stuff, but um, uh, you know, it could be a bit esoteric um, because it doesn't always, you know, apply to like, you know, practical everyday things. And most people are involved with practical everyday things and, and, you know, making their life move forward day by day. So, um, I think, you know, I don't have a, I don't have like some great answer. It's just, I just understood it like viscerally, um, that something that is limited in supply, absolutely limited in supply, is extremely valuable. And it just made sense, intuitively made sense. I never, I never went on a, like a shitcoin spree. Like I didn't get into shitcoins, then Bitcoin. I didn't need to understand or learn, you know, by burning my, my hand on the fire, why Bitcoin's more valuable. It was always Bitcoin. And <clears throat> I, I remember telling people, when Ethereum was like $4 and they were saying, Oh, well, this is cheap. This is way too like, what about this? And I'm like, no, like, and I explained to them why. And I'm like, I can't, I can't put my, you know, my money, my money is energy. It's my energy. Right. And so you, you invest your energy in things and then you have a association with those, right? You have a mental association. You have, you literally have a connection through your energy, which is, your value is stored energy, right? That's essentially what money is. You got now have a connection and I didn't want any part of my energy involved in, in, in Ethereum. I think it's absolute garbage. So I missed out on the run from $7 to $1,000. I could have made a lot of money. I didn't. Now I have family members who did. And when it went up to that, I was like, sell it. You just fucking sell it. And they did. And they made money and good for them. You know, I didn't, I lost out. And maybe being a, a maximalist or a shitcoin minimalist, whatever, whatever the term is now, um, maybe that's to my detriment, but you know what? Fuck it. Right. Well, listen, Kiss, I mean, you put out really great stuff. There's just really a handful of people who put out super educational materials, tutorials, whatever videos, instructions, like um, as I'm showing now for my YouTube viewers uh, on, I mean, your Twitter handle is uh, just simple uh, Kiss Bitcoin with one S, K I S Bitcoin. And that's your website. Keep it simple, bitcoin.com. And what I love, you know, about your approach and, you know, your ethos and the, the way you, you, you handle this whole thing is like, I, I, I feel you, you really empathize, you know, with the average user out there. Like, you know, there's just a handful of people out there who, who do great stuff like you, like, who is it? Like uh, Ben from, um, uh, uh, what's it called? A BTC session, uh, Ketan of Ministry of Nodes, who else? Uh, Bitcoin Q and A. And there's just, just a few people, right? That really put out, uh, instructions which i think you know can uh, the average user really average noob can follow understand you know comprehend so uh how do you how do you get to 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 i mean uh what was it was it a, like a process uh, for you yeah it was i mean look i <clears throat> the the longer i've been in bitcoin the more it was like i ha like i'm i have to do something to to um like support this. If, if I don't, if I don't do something, then like, I, I felt like I was letting myself down. Like I wasn't, I think I really do think this. And you know, some people might think this is like a bombastic statement, but I think Bitcoin is one of the most important things on this planet right now mm -hmm. because of the potential it has. And if I 
if I look back on my life and I, I miss the opportunity to be involved in, in making a difference in whatever way I could, then I would be regretful of that. And so it's, that's, that's kind of the intention, you know, I went in, into it with. So it was a long process because I didn't know how I could, you know, add value to this, right? I, I learned Python. I, I taught myself Python. I thought maybe I could do something there and that's not really my thing. Like there was definitely no value I could add there. Um, and, uh, you know, I took Justin Moon's class. He used to do a really? build boot camp. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did that. I, when it was like, it was, uh, it was free. He was still like doing the, be the beta, right? So he was testing it and stuff. And I took that. And that was after I taught myself Python for like maybe six or eight months. So, and I went through that and it was just like, you know, this is not, this is not for me. I'm not, I'm not going to be doing this. So it's like, what else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? And, um, you know, eventually I found uh, 402 payment required videos and he had, a, uh, they, whoever, whatever, you know, it had a video uh, setting up Electrum personal server, which I used because um, I didn't know how to set that up. And after seeing that, I was like, you know, this is really helpful. And I felt like his videos were a bit more technical. So I thought I could, I should make videos where it's, geared toward, you know, like my grandmother or like a 10 year old, you know, exactly. It's, um, That's what they call just, empathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you just walk through it and they learn how to use something um, in the way that I feel like is important, but they just walk through the process and hopefully in the process they learn about why oh maybe i should think about privacy maybe i should think about security or how this works or how that works because there must be a reason why the video is saying to do it this way or to do it that way so you know i'm not doing anything revolutionary i'm doing something you know pretty basic right it's just like i record videos of me using software and i explain what to do it's not rocket science but no one yeah but it's essential it. it's basic but yeah. essential that's that's what's missing this is what i'm you know imploring like all kinds of people around me like you know i mean this this the thing is you know mm. it's, it's like um i've been i've been talking to a couple of people now later like you know we got to get out of this echo chamber i think that we have i think there's a lot of people in the bitcoin like brilliant people really brilliant people you know brazilian times more intelligent more knowledgeable than me but uh it just um we are sort of, I feel like, and I get that from my girlfriend also. She says, you know, it's beautiful what you guys are doing, but you guys are living in a, a echo chamber. You're in a Bitcoin yeah, bubble. It's like I we agree. are in all bubbles, but how, we got to go outside. Most, a lot of people, most people are not even on Twitter, probably, you know? You're right. I agree with you completely. I think, you know, um, again, everything that I'm doing um, and, you know, what I started last year, I've always felt like I'm just, I'm just preparing for the, for the time. The time is still not now. Like my doing this website, the reason I made the website was because I always wanted to do this, but when I started seeing people on YouTube get censored, mm -hmm. I was like, I have to, because it is so stupid for me to, to build anything on top of a centralized platform. And I want to have my website. I want to have my email list because I can email is like, I think the best, most direct way to be able to communicate without having someone intervene. I mean, obviously, you know, that, that I guess could be intervened too, but like YouTube could just, you could build, you know, Tone Vase has like a hundred thousand subscribers and I think he depends on it, which is not smart in my opinion, but he could just get his legs chopped off in an instant. And then what the fuck is he going to do? You know? So, yeah. um, I, my, everything that I, that I've built is there, but it's, it's not time yet. Like the, the rush is not here. The people are not here. Like the new people that really need my videos are not here. People on Bitcoin, Twitter don't, you know, some of them I, I think are finding value from it and that's great, but I'm not making my videos for, for that crowd. Um, I'm making my videos for the people that are coming and I don't know when they're coming. I, I can feel like there will be a day when they're coming, but I don't think it's, it's, you know, it could still be a year out or I don't even know. And this stuff gets dated, so I'm going to keep making videos. Um, but I don't think the time is now. Everyone thinks the bull, the next bull market is around the corner. And um, I just, I'm not feeling it, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And 
you know, regarding Bitcoin, Twitter, I try to limit my time on Twitter, but I think it's important to constantly check our biases and look at our blind spots. And so lately, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, I'm much more tuned into like, um, you know, these, these economic, these financial podcasts. And I kind of want to hear what's going on with these central banks and the central bank bank plumbing and this madness, because, um, you know, I think, I think that these things are way, you know, macroeconomics and Mac, the global politics and stuff is much more uh, a factor of like the price and stuff than just stock to flow and just all this financialization of, you know, this, this, um, yeah, this and quant this quantification, yeah, this, like, and hyper quantification. Yeah. And also intellectualization. I think we're exactly. in over intellectualizing and, and yeah. putting too much expectation on, on right. the intelligence, not intelligence, you know, it's like, comprehension level or you know i mean we're all on different levels but i think yeah. we've got to like really really empathize with the with the average user and with the average whatever human being out there and i mean what do we want why are we doing this so that yeah you know so that bitcoin becomes rooted <laughs> so that these you know criminal cryptocratic central banking fiat system becomes obsolete but that comes only by human action and human action right you know, uh, is, is, comes from a desire, a, a need, uh, uh, you know, uh, a necessity. Uh, but again, it comes back. That's why, you know, I want to talk to you about usability. Now let's get to the practical question because now yeah. I'm, we're on your website, you know, it's real beautiful, like, oh, beautiful overview. So what have you like, uh, like you've got like some beautiful resources and videos. Uh, do you want to like, I have, to, to, I have yeah? to add to that. Yeah. So the videos are there. The videos have been, you know, being made for the last year. Um, I want to, I want to start writing blog posts too. Um, I just, you know, and add to the resources. I just have to find the time, you know, these videos take so much time to make. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's like one downside of it. But uh, another thing, another kind of intention I have with this whole website and the, the first blog that I want to write is how to, you know, the whole ethos, one of the most beautiful things about Bitcoin is that it allows you to be just a being, right? There's no mm -hmm. ident, there's no KYC, there's no anything, right? So you're just one being on the internet and you can start a hobby, start a business. You don't need to have your personal information out there. You can do everything in a way that you are protecting you you know you're maintaining your anonymity right because bitcoin is pseudonymous right so you have addresses but it's not tied to your identity and i want to i want to show people look you can you can really do this like i did this and I explain how did I, how i set how i got my my um my domain names and how i set up my uh, my website how i how i set up uh, my web hosting like how i did all this stuff how you know, BTC pay server, I'm in the process of integrating that, how you can do that and like how you can make a hobby, you know, actually make a hobby, maybe bring, you know, people can donate or you can sell stuff, obviously limited to digital, but also how to do it, you know, how to tie in the physical world, world with your privacy and security. So I've, I have, I've set up something and I don't know how I'm going to describe it, but where I can physically get things shipped to me now where I'm obfuscating my my address. So you're never going to know what my real address is. You're going to send it to essentially like a dead drop and I have a service that then sends it to me. So mm. you're not, you know, so yeah. everything has a layer of protection, right? Now, you're almost like James, uh, James Lopp, uh, like who, who obfuscated or like this. I think yeah, I, and I, I what he's done, Carter. yeah, everything, you know, all that stuff, you know, those articles about, about doing those things mm -hmm. are important, but he has to do so much more because he's a public figure. Well, I want to show people, you don't need to be, you know, have, have a, a, a picture or a name attached to you, just like build a brand, you know? And you can do the same thing because as a Bitcoiner, I don't want anyone to know I'm a Bitcoiner mm -hmm. yet. I still want, 
I still want to, you know, go out there and yell, you know, at the top of my lungs about Bitcoin, right? right. So you, do, I, I don't feel like you need to make the compromise. Um, and I'm not putting anyone that does down because if that's what you resonate with, do that. But this is what I resonate with. And I want to show people you can do it this way as well. And maybe you don't want to, you know, it's, this is not just about Bitcoin. Maybe you just want to start a hobby or a business. So, you know, follow along. You can do it this way too. Like there are so many resources. The point is you don't have to bend the knee, you know, and just mm -hmm. give all your information and have everything out there uh, because they say you do, you know, it's, it's completely legal to do it in, to preserve your privacy and to do these things where you're not um, opening up potentials for attack. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, uh, Kiss, I mean, we plan to talk about, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the practicality or the practical process of how to do like a uh, Bitcoin purchase on a non-KYC or sh I don't know, should I call it non-KYC uh, non or bit uh, KYC less, but it is uh, uh, KYC free, right? I mean, the, the BISC uh, platform, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's KYC free. Um, it's peer to peer. So right. the only the only person that sees your KYC is your trading partner. So um, that's a huge, I mean, that's way better than having to put your information in a central repository, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you only have to trust that your trading partner is not, you know, not a someone nefarious, right? right. Um, that takes, you know, holds your information. But still, they, they just have your whatever personal identify information with your bank. And that's only if you do a bank transfer, if you do, you know, I, I can't really speak to like a postal money order or any kind of mail service. I think you could do cash in the mail and you can certainly do face to face. Yeah. So face to face completely removes all of that. Right. Exactly. Um, I've never done any of those. I've only used the, um, the bank transfers. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in the, in the U S um, and that's worked out phenomenally for me. And I think that is a great balance of security, privacy, usability, um, and I've been I've been doing that for a, a very long a very long time. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, so Kiz, let's let's try um, let's try have you you know screen share if we can manage this. I hope I don't I don't have to make you host because something uh, doesn't work anymore. It used to be on Zoom, so uh, let's try it because we just tested it previously. It didn't work, so um, just uh, so I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And and can you try just just test the screen sharing? What's no, it? no good, no good. All right, all right, all right. Let me. I have. I think I have no other choice than to make you host. I'm, I hope if if I make you host that the live streaming doesn't get disrupted. But we, you know. But if but if it does, well, forgive me. I'm gonna upload it afterwards. Everything. All right, I'll make you host. It's, it's, it's weird because Zoom used to have like an option like to make someone a co-host or just, or just you know allow you to screen share. But now, I don't know, Zoom is really weird lately. I mean, and I have a premium version of that. I pay, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a pay, you know, I'm a, I'm a, oh. I've got the premium version, so I paid for that <laughs> shit, you know? So I'm just gonna make you a host, man, and okay. just, try, just try screen sharing. But I think it's live streaming still, beautiful. It's still live streaming, all right. Okay. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay, great. So Go ahead. So um it's you know, it's all very simple. You get it installed and uh, you can watch my videos or mm -hmm. uh on how to do that, how to install it, how to verify it. And um I'll just go through kind of US dollar uh and, and the American market. Obviously you can use it in the European market. So um Everything here is peer to peer and um, you have the offer book and you can see these are people selling, these are listings to sell, listings to buy. And you can look down here and you can see uh, the fiat value, the Bitcoin value and the equivalent price in US dollar and the people, the people that have put up this offer. Um, so you can sell them your Bitcoin or you can buy Bitcoin from these people. Mm -hmm. um, so if we go to buy Bitcoin, because that's what everyone should be doing, uh, 
<laughs> and so I'm using a fresh version. Um, so when you have your account set up, you know, everything will be white, but I just didn't want to use my, um, my working version of it just in case since we're uh, live. And so you can go through the book here and um, buy, right? So if we look at this, um, can you see my mouse? You yep. can see my pointer? Yep. My highlight, let me see if I can. Uh, all right, so you have a price here, and then this percentage in parentheses is the percent above the um, market price, okay? Uh, and as a seller, whoever puts up this listing can decide what they want to pay. You will pay 2.5% more than the current market price. And to um, give people some comparison, uh, Everywhere that you would buy, like uh, let's use Cash App, which is popular, um, extremely popular on Bitcoin Twitter, uh, you will pay something like one to two percent, um, depending on what you're buying. But it's safe to figure like one and a half percent. So you may be paying a premium here, uh, but you're paying for privacy because this is not KYC Bitcoin. This, which is uh, sorry, let me refrain. This, this Bitcoin is not associated with your KYC information, okay? There's no such mm -hmm. thing as KYC Bitcoin, non-KYC Bitcoin. But this Bitcoin is not associated with any KYC Bitcoin, so um, it's better for your privacy, right? Just generally. Doing it this way preserves your privacy, uh, which in turn may enhance your security. Um, so the amount here the equivalent in dollar amount based on the current market price and the exchange rate, which is currently 93.87. Um, the payment method, Zelle. So in my experience, I have only used this method. And this method for anyone not in the US is some type of <clears throat> back office, bank to bank um, infrastructure where you can instantly send payments between almost any US bank and uh, you know, you send to a phone number or an email, which is nice um, because I don't think you see their uh, banking information necessarily all the time. You just see whatever that identifiable information is, right? Because you have to register them on your end. So I've only used that and um, it's, it's worked phenomenally. I've never had any issues with uh, chargebacks because as far as I know, that payment is almost uh, instant and unreversible. It's very hard to even the, talk to any like a Zelle customer service or to, to find out. But as far as I know, it's a final payment um, for all intents and purposes. Uh, I've never had any chargeback issues with that. And I want to make sure everyone understands when using BISC, this is my personal opinion. People may disagree, but it is always advantageous to be a buyer of Bitcoin and a seller of fiat mm -hmm. because you cannot get charged back. You have the Bitcoin, it is done. Okay. Right. When you sell Bitcoin, there is always even the slightest possibility if there's a chargeback, your Bitcoin is gone and so is the money. So depending on the platform, like it does it depend? Well, like, no, no, no. Just, you just have to assume just, I've look Zelle, as far as I know, the chargeback risk is almost nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in the fiat system, you are still, there's, there's never an assurance there because you're, you're, you know, you're playing by their rules. Everything is through their centralized institution. So always know. Right now, other payment methods, I, I, I can't speak to them, but the charge rest, charge back risk is higher, you know, especially things like Venmo. I don't know if uh, BISC even messes with those anymore, but you know, a Venmo or a PayPal, the charge back risk is, is high. And I, I don't know if BISC uses them because of that, but I certainly would never ever use those because I don't ever want to deal with any potential for chargeback. I don't like it. I don't feel comfortable, mm -hmm. but 
with Zelle. I've never had that problem. But again, you just always have to be aware, unless you're cash, unless you're using cash, unless you do um, send cash by mail, uh, you know, there's, there's always the slightest possibility of a chargeback. So if yeah. you're selling Bitcoin, if you're buying Bitcoin though, Bitcoin transactions are not reversible. So you're good. So uh, you can take the offer and, you know, I have to set up an account, so I may not be able to show that. Um, but just kind of high level. And for, you know, if, if you want to see a transaction being made and how to set everything up, go watch my BIS tutorials uh, on the website. Mm -hmm. And I'll t I take you through every single aspect, every setting, what's what, why it's there, how it works, how to set up your payment account, how to back it up, everything you need to know. Um, and it's really simple. This is a really simple piece of software. Um, it might be intimidating at first because of you know all this information, but it is a very simple, uh, very reliable. I've, I've had maybe one software issue in the three plus years I've used it and it was fixable. Um, so all your funds here, you have a wallet. Uh, if you ever set up a wallet, you know, you have a seed. Uh, they have a little bit of a different um, mechanism for generating the seed. It's associated with, um, I think, a date as well. I'm not sure how they generate it, but. Right. Um, anyway, you have your wallet here. But what's important, um, because, yeah. um, you know, before we, we start recording, I mentioned to you, I, I finally managed to do one just for the sake of testing and understanding education um, to do one, uh, you know, transfer or transaction. Uh, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin and, uh, you know, it, I, I think it was a couple of bugs in there because, uh, you know, I, I, I deposited, a, you know, I did the deposit funding but then it didn't work out. So I, I, I transferred a little bit more than was actually necessary. And then finally, when I restarted the whole system, it, it finally went through and then I was allowed to transfer the remaining, you know, required amount to the seller, to his bank account in somewhere in Poland. So, uh, and then it worked. So I'm just waiting, you know, till he, uh, whatever he, she receives it and then mm -hmm. I get automatically. So there is a deposit required, right? Uh, a pers uh, in, you know, minute uh, percentage, something like that, right? Of the total amount. What do you, uh, deposit of what? Oh, when uh, you make- the, Into the what? escrow account, into the escrow, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's important for anyone to, for everyone to understand, to use BISC, you already have to have some Bitcoin, right? So right. you can't come here with no Bitcoin because the whole point is you're using Bitcoin um, and you need to use Bitcoin uh, to to create the transact, to create the, the um, contract essentially, right? If you want to buy or sell, you have to deposit for security a little bit of Bitcoin, right? Um, and so you have to find a way to get the Bitcoin, whether at a band, whether it's, you know, hopefully you can find another medium, maybe a face-to-face -face transaction, you know someone, or maybe you have to buy a little on KYC. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that's just the way it is these days. A couple of years ago, you, there were a lot more options to buy uh, KYC list uh, Bitcoin easily. It's it's become more challenging, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, just for um, understanding, you know, because there's there's not so many platforms. There's a uh, BISC uh, network. There's Hoddle Hoddle, which you just uh, previously told me that uh, you're only able to do on BISC because it is. Um, uh, what is it? I mean, uh, Hoddle Hoddle is, uh, is like restricted to, to specific. When, when I tried using it uh, a year ago, it just seemed to be very European centric and mm -hmm. they did not have much, I think, liquidity in the US. Um, and so there, there was no benefit to me. Um, you know, BISC seems to have uh, quite, you know, uh, European liquidity, US liquidity. So I've just, I've just always used BISC and um, I'd, I'd never had a reason to use anything else. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the more the merrier, there needs to be more. Uh, there needs to be Yeah, way we more. need much more, you know, uh, what do you call it, alternative uh, methods and, and, and options. And, you know, especially the more you, I, I think it will become eventually more and more usable and uh, smoother, the whole process, the whole procedure, uh, UX, UI, 
usability, you know, for the really average user, that would be awesome because, you know, fuck KYC. I mean, this is, this is just uh, totally irresponsible in my eyes. I think you know, people don't understand uh, the consequences. I, I will say, um, you know, BISC is phenomenal for this reason, but I, uh, when I made my videos for BISC, you know, everything that I do, I do it, you know, just out of love, right? So I have no expectation of anything. But when I made it, that they had um, they had uh, rolled out their um, their BSQ token, and so individuals who contribute to BISC can uh, file essentially like a pull request on GitHub and be compensated for their contributions. And so I decided to do that, and I was compensated for my con for you know the videos that I created. So awesome. they've really created an amazing place where people can actually get paid. For, for what they're doing and then uh, convert that, sell that BSQ token for Bitcoin, right? Awesome. And I did that and it was flawless, no KYC, no anything. I mean, it, it's, it's really like the dream. Like they're, they're really walking that path and, and, and um, their actions really speak very loudly. I mean, they're about it and they're creating it. And I just wish more, there was more of it, you know? I, the, the 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 financialization of bitcoin is a double-sided coin like it's it, it's good and it's also bad right right um because of just all of this kyc-ness and i don't believe i don't believe we need to fit you know the 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 peg the, the square into the hole like we don't need to try to make bitcoin into to fit into the financial system, you know, right. change the fucking financial system. It's fucked up. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, to make a comparison, I mean, you know, I understand, you know, uh, why people, and, you know, I still have a Kraken account, but, uh, the thing is, you know, I mean, yeah, they're reliable, trustworthy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm a layman, but just also from other testimonials, they say, you know, they have a top notch security uh, service and especially the lowest transaction fees. Now this is the trade-off, right? In BISC, mm -hmm. of course, you gotta like accept that trade-off. You pay not only that premium that you just mentioned, but also the there's higher transaction fees, right? I mean, um... no. Well, there are no transaction fees. There are just the whatever the individual placing the buy or the sell, right? Oh, that's the it. Offer. Okay, okay, that's gotcha. it. So that's it. So right. if if you don't want to pay any fees create a new offer to mm -hmm. you go create a new offer to buy Bitcoin and say, I want to buy it at market price and then wait for someone to take your offer. Um, now this has to be stay on the whole time. Otherwise, you, because of the peer-to-peer the -peer nature of um, the software, you have to be online for your offer to be online. So, but you don't have to pay that. I mean, it's really like, just do whatever you want. You don't want to pay a premium. Then put up a put up um put up an order put up a, a listing um a trade an offer sorry and it's called an offer technically put up an offer and just wait for someone to take it that's it you know it's exactly. it's a very it's a very just kind of free market like this is what I want to do do you want to you know interact with me okay if not go somewhere else there are people that are just exorbitant I mean there are people here fifty percent just they just like have it sit there waiting for FOMO or waiting for some moron to come and pay a premium because they're so terrified they're not going to get Bitcoin. And hey, if someone's going to pay that, so be it, you know? Mm -hmm. But th there's so many times when it's just like the order book is just so frothy with, with just people, gre it's greedy, you know, people want to sell you Bitcoin for like 25% above spot. It's just like, fuck off. <laughs> oh, come on. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's not, that's not free market. I mean, I, well, well, no, I believe that, in free that's, market. That's, but, that's free will uh, choice. If someone yeah, wants to pay yeah. that, so be yeah, it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's fine. I just, I would never pay it. It's, it, you know, yeah, it's laughable. But um, I, I just, I can't speak hi highly enough of, of BISC. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. And They've been doing it for so many years now, um, and pe more and more people are contributing, and it's great. It's great. So, are there any other details that um, you know people should know? Like, uh, view, well, you view know, maybe was... if 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 you think there are things, I just I've, I've used it so much, you know, I don't have a I don't have like a, a new new eyes 
okay. perspective on it. How, so, how long does it take thing. till you get your? I mean, uh, you work. Okay, you you transfer your the, the, your fiat uh, by with Z, with Zelle, and how right. long does it take until you you know the whole transaction is complete? You get your Bitcoin in your address, at least in so your basic if, address. Right, so. Yeah. So if you go and you watch my video, that transaction was literally, I I made it. Uh, no, I took it. I took someone's order. And I think it was com start to finish completed, transferred into my hardware wallet in an hour or two hours. Um, I don't know exactly. I'd have to look it up. But faster than it would be with many centralized exchanges, right? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it can be extremely fast. Now, the trade has four days. So you have four steps, right? You take the offer. That transaction has to clear because it's the multi-sig. Once the, the once that transaction confirms, then you um, you exchange via the fiat rail right through Zelle. You send or you and you receive. have to stay and you have to stay online right until uh, no. Uh, you know, till no, no, the, no, no, no 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 I mean the process until the seller confirms that you know that he he or she you know that the seller accepts the I I, I read something about that like you uh, in some kind of of, of a doing this process somewhere you need to stay online with your yeah right? I, I believe you need to be online the entire time your offers up once exactly. your offer is taken mm -hmm. i think once your offer is taken and the the multi-sig is that multi-sig transaction confirmed then i don't think you need to be online you can you can make the fiat payment then go back on and then once the other party confirms they've received the fiat then the Bitcoin in the multi-sig is, it, this prompts you and says, okay, do you want to send this to an external wallet, wallet or do you want to transfer it into, into your wallet? Right. Um, gotcha. And it's done. Just like that, okay. it's finished. All right. So, uh, yeah, anything comes to your mind uh, before we, you know, maybe slowly, gradually uh, wrap up? I mean, because I think that's that's more than enough knowledge uh, and, and education now for, for, you know, precious knowledge that you're giving. Uh, is there anything like comes to your mind that, you know, people should be aware of or, you know, be careful, whatever, or like, you know, just to educate themselves on? Um, yeah, you should be aware of the, you know, the trade-offs when uh, you are submitting KYC to a centralized party. Um, that information can leak. The, there have been many, many times where people's uh, driver's licenses, passport information. Yeah, that's the dangerous um, part. This is like has totally leaked. irresponsible. Uh, man. I mean, and yeah. so um, the threat model, you should think about what the threat model is. Um, mm -hmm. I choose to, to have the state be my threat model because if I'm if I'm shooting for that, then everything else underneath will probably be taken care of. And I don't assume that I could, you know, uh, do anything against the state. If they're going to come after you, you're fucked. So just yeah. be aware. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's on two fronts. It's the state, the government. And on the other side, if, if those, I mean, really delicate, really sensible information gets leaked out i mean uh, you know you've got like five dollar wrench attacks by criminals right. that's when this that's is... when the the lower things that's when the 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 you know the crim the, the the lower vectors of attack um become become a problem right so you right. want to guard against that um you know you always use separate emails uh if if for every kyc exchange you know use an individual email use unique passwords always uh, never use a two-factor sms um so that's a you know always good um things to do uh because if you have information leaked and an email gets leaked it doesn't affect anything else um so those are easy things to do to protect your money really um because you're protecting your privacy only because that affects potentially your money right, right. um if your bank account information gets leaked, well, that sucks, but that centralized institution is, they're the ones spending the money to protect your money. So you don't, you don't have as much to worry about. Um, right. So when it comes to other tutorials or education, you know, like how to do things like, 
uh, like for example, running a full node, you more specialize like uh, you do more like on the nodal, right? Because I have my, I have a my node full node. So yeah. are, are you thinking of doing like more? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just low hanging fruit. You know, I got a nodal and I wanted to make videos about that so that people can see. And then when I'm done with that, um, which will be, I'm going to do a BTC pay server video on nodal and also not because more people don't have it, not all. Um, and then Samurai Wallet. And then I, I, I want to do my node. I want to do, um, you know, I have an old laptop. I want to repurpose. There's so many, I mean, there's so many things to do. It's just finding the time. Right, right. So there's plenty of videos to be made. You know, it's just, right. it just takes time. It takes I a lot you. of time with it. Um, because I have to think about like how to make every little thing simple enough yet describe everything so that there's no doubt, um, no confusion. Because if, if someone doesn't understand even what this little thing does here, then they might feel uncomfortable about the whole process. Exactly. So you got to go through every little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, you know, finding the time. Right. So, uh, you know, the trade-off, uh, I think people need to understand uh, are really worth it to to accept because usually, you know, like if you go on Kraken or any other centralized exchange, you transfer the money from your bank account, you know, uh, before before that you do a like full, like you got to like become totally naked. You, you give them all your data, your passport, your utility address, your address, I mean, everything, right? So, yeah. um, so, uh, so the, 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 the main, I think I would say the, the main trade off is that, okay, you have to go a little bit through a little bit more hip hops and, you know, procedures, uh, in this peer to peer network, right? Decentralized peer to peer, totally non KYC, but you pay a, maybe a little bit more, uh, like uh, premium above the, what do you call it? Like the, uh, the market, the current price. market price. Right. So, right. right. Yeah. So, privacy, your privacy costs a little bit more. And you have to you have to um, see if that's worth it to you. You know, I, exactly. I think it is. Um, it's easy. You know, auto buy has become a very popular thing. All these um, auto buy apps, um, Cash App now has auto buy, and mm -hmm. um, there are other companies that are doing it, and that's great. Uh, setting it and forgetting it's great. I've recommended that to a couple of people, but is that ideal? Um, not in my eyes. Uh, it's simple, you know, it's easy, but I prefer to still have my Bitcoin not linked to KYC. I, I just wonder, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's everyone has to just feel that out for themselves and, um, and decide what they want to do. You know, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter if it's KYC because something's going to change in the future. You know, um, my friend was telling me in Portugal mm -hmm. that they don't charge any tax on cryptocurrency gains. Where is that? Where? Portugal. Portugal. Oh, yeah. he's Portuguese. Yeah. I and he's that. like, well, I have dual citizenship. So why would, why wouldn't I go there? And you know, if it's... I need to sell Bitcoin, I'll do it there. Right. And his dad's like, I need to buy Bitcoin. So how do I do it? So I told him, do this cash app buy it just set it and forget it don't worry about the price don't trade it you know just buy mm -hmm. it but different different sovereign different sovereigns are going to be like well we see the value and we're going to incentivize this so if you don't compete and if you just try to try to you know onerously tax um like what is what is the the in america like when you spend it you have to pay tax on it i mean that can't last that's nonsense you know, but the more, more places that create no taxes on any cryptocurrency gains, none. Well, fuck. How much does it cost to become a citizen? A hundred grand? No problem. You know, you, if you have, if, if, if you're a Bitcoin whale, <laughs> then you're going to, you're going to just drop money left and right. You know, a right. citizen here, citizen there. If, if you have enough Bitcoin, it is in your benefit to renounce your U S citizenship. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah, definitely. So. So the tax, you know, tax situation is in Austria and Germany pretty much the same. You, I mean, uh, you don't pay any cap after one year. If you can hodl for one year, after one year, you don't pay any capital gains tax. But still, uh, that's you know, phenomenal. That's yeah. phenomenal. But let's see, you know, how things go. So, um, yeah. 
So, uh, Kiss, uh, I think we, we need to repeat this sometime in the near future as soon as you have, you know, more amazing, uh, you know, educational stuff coming up and uh, keep up the great work. It's really fascinating. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, people, where can people find you? I'm going to put, I mean, I, I showed that anyway in the beginning, but on uh, Twitter, you're, you, uh, we can find you on uh, Yeah, Twitter, Kiss Bitcoin. Twitter, keep it, keep, keep it simple, Bitcoin.com and just, um, you know, sign up sign up for the email list that's the best way the most direct way um for us to stay in contact uh i i still i will post on youtube trailers for the videos but everything will be only on the website um i'm not i'm not going to put my fate in you know any centralized centralized party's hands it's it's crazy it's crazy to build any kind of in this day and age with all this censorship and all this nonsense that's going on, that people build these businesses on top of other businesses that tell you that they can do whatever they want to your business. It's crazy. It's, it's really, madness. It's really, it's, it's, right. Uh, I, think, I think people, you know, people see the zeitgeist move in, a, like podcasting's gotten big, right? Everyone does a podcast. So people see other people doing this, mm -hmm. so they do it. Right. But I see, censorship rising and i i see the future as being more decentralized and you can have more control of your fate um you just have to set the you know you have to set the, the foundation for that so i i feel like that's what i'm doing and you know it might it might be a slower process but i'm okay with that um and just hope that people find my stuff and it helps them you know if it if it only helps one person, I've done my job. Like that's good enough for me. Um, so that's that's why I'm doing it. Just, yeah. just to help. Uh, dude, um, Case, I really appreciate what you're doing, and uh, hope um, Thank this you. is actually I a second appreciate. time. This is actually a second time, right? You're in, because we had, I think we had talked right with with uh, yeah, we had Stephanie from Jan, and who was it? Yeah. Ben was it Ben Kaufman, I think. And then I think uh, another person too, uh, Stephen, St Stephen. Um, I don't remember his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. We had a little, we had a panel discussion. Yeah. Yeah. A few, a few months back. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I look, I really love what you're doing too. I mean, you, you're putting out great content. I watch, I watch most of it. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing um, whatever it takes. You know, I, I really want some critical adoption rate, but whatever it is, you know, the average user, the merchants, especially now, I, I really want to push the merchants like adopting. Bitcoin, uh, you know, preparing themselves with a full note. So maybe, you know, maybe we could even integrate your work uh, once we start here over here in, in Austria, uh, maybe with Sven Schneiders. Uh, he also wants to do some, you know, consulting work for, for merchants, businesses, small businesses, like really preparation is everything. And I think there's a process, there's a science behind it, how we can do this, right? Yeah, you know what I'd love to do? I think, you know, it would be great with you. I'd love to just like, you know, bullshit and chit chat, just like on more, just like the esoteric kind of like, there's so, so many Bitcoin podcasts out there and they're great, but it's, it's so financialized, yeah. intellectualized, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. there are very few. So, you know, you, you, you bring it up sometimes. Right. But but people don't like, don't get it. I think with my question. No, no, Sometimes no, and that's I'm like... fine. It's it's just for yeah. It's for whoever you know is into that, right? Whoever like vibrates kind of with that with that wave. But I could I could I could hear it sometimes with you, and so I was like, oh, it's there. And also with like John Vallis, he's done a couple of episodes. Just sometimes he'll talk about stuff. But just that kind of flavor of it, because I think there there isn't much of that. So I'd love to just like bullshit and talk about those kind of things. Um, I. I had a conversation yesterday with um, Crypto Creamers, um, mm -hmm. and that video is going to come soon. And we kind of just got into that too, just a conversation a little bit about that. Uh, that more, more, I don't know what to call it, just, just not, not so intellectualized, not so, um, you know, quantified. Yeah. More yeah. just, you know, bigger picture, more philosophized just more more of that more of that kind yeah. of talk because i think people some people i certainly did when they they get bitcoin and it's like it, it just like hits them you know it's like it hits them yeah. deep 
right? They just like feel it, you know, yeah. and it's, that's important too. You know, let's not forget, you know, not, you know, your intuition also matters. Like, yeah, you make financial decisions based on numbers, but people also make decisions also based on like, oh, go with your gut. So that's a very real thing. Right. Um, and another thing that we talked about yesterday, which was so interesting was this, um, we, we just started talking about like artificial intelligence yes. and how I've noticed in society, this glamorization of, 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 of becoming a computer, yeah. like, like, oh, humans should aspire to this pinnacle of turning into a computer and uh, melding with a computer. And it's like, wait, but you don't like, have you even explored what it is to be a human? Like, yeah. like there's so much there to, to, you know, with personal development and, and just going in within yourself that most people haven't even looked at. Yeah. Like and I've tried, you know, and seriously, dude, I mean, bro, I, I've tried to go into this rabbit hole, but I'm, Sometimes I think may, maybe people are not ready yet. I'm not sure, but you know, you know, my main branding is actually the Total Connector. There, there was a reasoning, right. there was a purpose behind this name or title, the Total Connector, because yeah. I was, I was like, maybe it's time now. Maybe we don't have time for all this bullshit and revolutions, but really time for evolutionary thinking, comprehension, you know, right. uh, physicality, spirituality, mat materialism, physicality, money essence you know like what is essence of creation what what uh, you know what is artificial intelligence you know uh, right and, and and why are we doing this i mean and, and this is the yeah. main question i ask people like what is your vision for the future how what is the data lives of people going to look like because at the end of the day bitcoin is a tool right but the tool you know serves something it should serve something like a like a much bigger picture much you know, maybe something beyond our comprehension level of imagination. And so we have already so many technologies just, you know, hiding in the closets that will come out that just serve to be humanity or serve to be, you know, human existence. But maybe we can, totally. you know, maybe we can, we should, you know, we continue should, we with should, that, you know? Yeah, we should. I think we should just kind of like, let's see how that evolves. But, you know, maybe every X amount of time, whatever, just talk and let's let, get into that. And if people resonate and there are people, you know, other people who want to talk about stuff like that and, you know, because it'll go down different rabbit holes and things that like people need to go and step into, like, you're not going to open like your news feed and see some of this shit. Like you have to, go deep and like resonate and look into some of these things, you know, um, some of these topics and other things like maybe, you know, hidden technologies, right? Maybe, right. Uh, you know, things that people consider like conspiracy or woo woo or whatever. Right. But, uh, I, I want to, I just think, you know, you take it back to like basic, you take it back to the individual, like, Hey, haven't you ever experienced something like, had a weird experience, or maybe you had someone in your life who said that they could see the future or they did this, or, you know, like individuals anchor with their experiences. So if you or I have a crazy experience, we can try to describe that to someone else, but they don't get it. And I feel like it's the same with Bitcoin. You, you, may, you may try to tell someone how amazing Bitcoin is, but <laughs> if they don't get it, they, they don't understand what you understand because like they have to experience it for themselves right um so it'd be cool to do something like that yeah let's think about it whatever you know however it works out but that'd be fun to talk about yeah it'd be my pleasure man um uh, so hey have a good have a good day uh dude and uh, let's talk soon and thanks so we'll much for soon. sharing your knowledge all right thanks for having me it's been great all right bye 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 Hey, so what you think about this amazing, really deep down the rabbit hole talk with KISS, K K K KS, Bitcoin. Uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter and on his uh, website. That's his Twitter handle is KISBitcoin. His website is 
keepitsimplebitcoin.com where you can find all these uh, you know educational materials videos and other research articles coming up and on his youtube channel that's youtube.com slash kiss bitcoin and yeah make sure you know you think about it you understand you know the trade-offs when you go on a centralized exchange but uh, it's let's say it's relatively easy just a little bit more hops and maybe a, a few more procedures before you you know can complete um, you know full peer-to-peer -peer decentralized fiat for Bitcoin exchange whatever payment method you you can use with it's a bank account Zelle or whatever there is available on uh, you know in options so uh, yeah please like it retweet it reshare it to, uh, to your friends neighbors families wh uh, wherever you are and uh, thank you so much again please i uh, would also appreciate a positive reply a positive feedback on um, on one of the podcast platforms on youtube please give it a subscribe follow me on twitter and thanks so much for supporting for listening i right, talk to you soon